full. We have come into this house, gathered in your name, to worship you. From the four corners of this world we have come this week, matters not to us, Father, what the pers person next to us might be wearing. Matters not to us the title of the person that is in our proximity. Truth be told, our humanity is at war with your divinity. We need a word from you. See, Father, we've got to go back home and we've got to stir up our homes and we've got to encourage our families and we've got to extinguish the powers of darkness in our communities and we can't do it unless we get a word from you. So like the patriarchs of old, Father, I pray one simple prayer today and that is have your way, Lord. Break up some stuff. It is true we've been in here for quite some time this morning. But Father, we want you in these next few fleeting moments to move, Father, like the wind uh, on the day of Pentecost. And let your anointing flow, Father, like the wings of an eagle. Father, heal uh, bodies, renew minds. Uh, Father, break up the works of the enemy and give your people complete and absolute deliverance. We claim it by faith in the name of Jesus. Father, let the words of my mouth meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight Father you're my strength you're my redeemer and we thank you for it in Jesus name Amen would you please grab another brother by the hand I know that we don't like to touch that often but we ought to like to touch if you know who you are look another brother in the eye and tell him brother I got a feeling everything's going to be alright uh, that person may not feel it like you feel it, so find somebody else that's just as anointed as you are. Look them dead in the face and tell them, neighbor, concerning you and everything in your life, I got a feeling that everything is going to be all right. Now look up and down your row and look at the persons that are up and down your row. Tell them you're on the right row with the right praise. Of something good is getting ready to happen for us. Now, every row ought to have a designated praiser. I don't know who that person is. Man cannot appoint them. But they came in the church this morning with a mind of praise and thanksgiving, singing every day is a day of thanksgiving. If you are the designated praiser on your row, I don't care who you offend for the next 15 seconds, but would you turn the club out on this morning, open up your mouth, lift your voice, and give God the craziest praise. Be the igniter on your row. I'm a man and I'm a worshiper. I'm a man and I give God the glory. I'm a man and I survived it. I'm a man and I owe God the glory. I'm a man and I'm intentional about giving God the praise because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me Are there any intentional praises on every row that are just throw your hands up in the air, let your hair move in the air, and say, thank you, Jesus? You may be seated. On your way down, just look at somebody and tell them, we came to have church this morning. I said, did you come to have church this morning? If you came to have church this morning, see, this room was filled to a, a, a point this morning and some had to leave and go to other places, but, but God hasn't done his best work yet. If you came to have church this morning, I dare you to shout, I came to have church this morning. I honor deference and respect to presiding Bishop Charles Edward Blake, to the chief apostle of our church. Without him, I would not stand this morning. He's a man of God who loved the men of the church. And not only the men of the church, but the sons of the church. He doesn't just pick you based on name recognition, but he looks around in the deep places of our church, looking for those who are willing to serve. Found a young man in Virginia, said, I'll give you a shot. I'm so glad to know we serve an honorable leader, a courageous leader. That we serve a leader that is built for this season. 
And in this absence, would you help me to celebrate presiding Bishop Charles Edward Blake? First Assistant Bishop P.A. Brooks in his absence and of course, Second Assistant Presiding Bishop who was with us earlier, the Bishop Jerry Wayne Macklin. I'm so honored to have this morning the Secretary of the General Board with us on this morning. He is such a blessing to the church. He makes the Church of God in Christ look good. Great man of business acumen and not only business acumen, but he can turn a church upside down if you give him about five minutes. This morning, I'm somewhat nervous, but yet honored to have in our midst the Secretary of the General Board, the Bishop Cedric Daniels. Thank God for him on this morning, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Then, of course, to the former chairman of this great body, the Lord used for many years to establish the ministry and to take us to heights that are unknown. Incredulous gospel preacher, phenomenal man of God, incredulous thinker. This morning we are honored to have in our miss general board member Bishop Daryl Hines. We thank God for him. <laughs> to the general board, many of whom were here on this morning, which was a historic day. Mother Lewis, who is with us, who is in her session this morning. Mother Rivers, our supervisor of women emeritus, chairman of the board of trustees, chairman of the board of bishops. To my own bishop, the one and only, the mighty man of God, led by God to lead the, the second jurisdiction state of Virginia in this season. Every son has got to have a father. In this season, I'm glad in Virginia we call our father Bishop Wilbur L. Daniels. And this morning, even though there may be challenges in his health from time to time, I'm so glad to know that he's with me in spirit and is here in the city. And we honor, would you help me to honor my bishop the Bishop Wilbert L. Daniels. Certainly we honor all of the bishops of the St. Louis and Missouri region, to Vice Chairman Hicks, to Overseer Chapel, to the Chairman's Advisory Board, to the Executive Board of the Men's Department. We're gonna ask our Executive Department leaders to stand, regional directors, and our staff. And on yesterday, we had our first class of jurisdictional presidents, where we, for the very first time, inducted approximately 40 new presidents from across the nation to serve in jurisdictions all across this country. Would you please stand with us on this morning? Help us to celebrate our newest jurisdictional presidents of the International Men's ministry, overseer chapel, and to the deacon's advisory board. We honor you today, my home church, Greater Emmanuel Temple, to my parents who are here today, Superintendent Michael Golden Sr. and Lady Deborah Golden. Would you help me honor my parents today? To the Green family, who I am a proud member of and glad to be a part. Tremendous family, tremendous leadership through the years. And this morning, my uncles and some of my aunts are here today. I'm going to ask them to please stand on this morning. And I want to honor them in their respective places that are here. Thank God. Amen. I see one of my uncles. Amen. On this morning. I see one. I see two. Amen of my uncles. Would you please pray for my uncle, Bishop Dwight Green, as he's recovering from being in the hospital on this week. I see my aunt, and she's in the back working in registration, Naomi Ward, to Dr. Ward, and to the members of our family. I'm blessed to have three beautiful children, Michael Golden III, Malaya Angelina, Samuel L. Green Golden, I'm blessed as a father. I want them to stand. My children, my son is probably working somewhere. Amen. But my daughter and my son, my youngest son, oh, there he is on the camera. Amen. Can you help me to celebrate my children this morning? No leader can do what he does without an appropriate helpmate. 
I don't care how far you go, I don't care what you do, if you don't have adequate help, you're not going to be there long at all. But the Lord has saw fit over the last 17 years to put me with what I believe is the finest woman in the church of God in Christ. I'm not going to get in your Kool-Aid, don't get in mine. But I want to thank God this morning for the rock of the golden family, for my beautiful wife, the mother of all of my children. Will you help me to celebrate Lady Trina Golden on this morning? And finally, I honor God for the memory of my grandfather who taught me to love this church, to persevere in this church, to stay in this church, to be everything God called me to be. The Lord called him home in the year 2016. But I do honor his memory every time I have opportunity. Will you help me to celebrate the memory of the late Bishop Samuel L. Green, Jr.? Second Thessalonians 3, 1 through 3. These words are penned on this morning, and I want to say to all of you brothers, registration will open today for our 2020 conference, and we will announce, so please do not leave. We will announce at the end of this service today our venue and destination for the year of 2020. Second Thessalonians 3, 1 through 3 states these words in this Pauline epistle. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men. For all men have not faith, but, look at your name and say, but the Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Richard Havison, a former Senate chaplain, stated intercession is the truly universal work for the Christian. No place is closed to intercessory prayer. No continent, no nation, no city, no organization, no office, no power on earth can keep intercession out. Charles Spurgeon states, no man can do me a truer kindness in this world than to simply pray for me. We currently live, my brothers and sisters, in a day and time when prayer has been devalued in the stock market of spirituality. Let me, however, my brothers, emphasize the truth, my brothers and my sisters, that there is value and worth in your prayer. And it is clear that in order for you to know what prayer will do, you must discern what prayer has done. Esther, I must awaken. I know this is men's day, but it is all right to invite a couple sisters to the party. This morning, I must then therefore invite our dear sister Esther. Esther interceded to the king on behalf of her people in the seventh chapter of Esther, and the king granted her request, illustrating to us that intercession grants believers the supernatural power to deliver what can't deliver itself. Can I submit to you, my dear brothers, that's why you must be careful how you deal with the person even sitting next to you. Because just because you may not see them sitting on the platform or may not ever see them on the billboards of the Holy Convocation, can I submit to you today that the person that is sitting next to you could be the answer to your last prayer. <laughs> You got to be careful not to walk by another brother and not speak to him. You got you to be careful not to size a brother up by what he's got on or the way that he looks or by what he drives or where he lives or, or even his last name because what you do not know uh, is the person you may need the most is the person uh, that you have uh, extinguished. So be careful, my dear brothers. Look to your left, look to your right, and you ought to be thankful for your brother today because can I tell you that the person that is sitting next to you could 
should be anointed by God to take you into your next season. Uh, and so whether you believe that they are anointed or not, whether you believe uh, that they are dressed well or not, whether you believe uh, that they have the right title or the right last name, uh, can we just learn to be kind to one another and look out for one another and, and, and love one another and just lift one another up even if I can't get nothing from you. Even, God help me here, even if uh, you are not going to be a stepping stone to another promotion, uh, I got a responsibility as a man of God uh, to simply be kind uh, to you. And if I'm going to do anything uh, for you in this season, money may not be appropriate. Uh, yes, prestige may not be appropriate, but I ought to pray for you. Now, my brothers and my sisters, you may say today, uh, he's read his scripture, but he has not given us his subject. Uh, I'm so glad you asked this morning because my subject is plain and clear. Could you grab another brother by the hand and look them dead in the eye and say, brother, will you please pray for me? God help me here. I'm in the wrong church. I, I think we have in this season devalued prayer to the point that we act as if prayer does absolutely nothing for us. But can I tell you, we can literally turn the whole city of St. Louis, Missouri upside down if we had a room full of brothers that would simply pray for one another. All men must admit that there are times where life like Samson will cut your hair and zap you of your spiritual strength. You don't always have to have a Delilah in your lap to have a strength deficiency in your life. Strengthlessness doesn't always mean one has sinned or fallen away. It could simply be the evidence of simply being tired. What do you do when you're saved and tired? Called and tired. Anointed and tired. Life has the ability to simply wear you down. But the scripture further lets us know that Job in Job the 42nd chapter received restoration and reconciliation and restitution when he interceded on behalf of his friends. Can I tell you on this morning that I didn't come to the holy convocation for anybody to pat me on the back. Can I be real this morning? I didn't come to holy convocation to play church. I didn't come to holy convocation just because I was giving a peculiar or particular seat. I came to convocation because I need somebody to intercede for me. I need somebody that's not so stuck up and bougie that they won't walk by me and say, brother, I discern that you're going through something right now. And if I don't pray for you, the devil's going to gain the advantage of you. You left some stuff back at home and, and nobody knows about it but you and God. But I'm here to tell you that I'm connected with you in the spirit and I discern I need to pray for you. In this moment, I can't judge you. In this moment, I don't need to size you up. In this moment, all I need to do is get between you and it. Can I have a witness this morning? Is there anybody that would simply say pray for me? Scripture further lets us know as we dive into the word on the, this morning that Job's friends had a misunderstanding of his present and his future based on their traditional exposure. They thought he was in trouble because of what he had done. They didn't know he was in trouble because of what he was coming into. But not divine revelation in this moment should let us know that intercession is an equal opportunity employer. It is possible to get what you've lost by praying for me to get what I need. I wish in this season we would kick envy and jealousy to the curb. 
I wish in this season we would stop wishing ill will and evil on one another. Truth is, if I'm going to get where I'm going, I need you. Truth is, if you're going to get where you're going, you're going to need me. And instead of hearing the bad about me uh, and publicizing it on all of the latest blogs, instead of hearing the worst about me and whispering my name uh, in midnight conversations, uh, God help me, and backroom discussions, uh, can you get anointed enough in this season uh, to get off your high horse uh, and simply just pray for me? I don't need you to let me know I'm in trouble. I know that. I don't need you to let me know I'm broken. I know that. I don't need you to let me know that I'm going through. I know that. All I want to know is, is there another brother that showed up to Holy Convocation that will discern me enough to say I got to pray for him. Watch this, because I can't get where I'm trying to go if I can't pray that you get where you are trying to go. And there is a season where we ought to put our desire on the back burner and simply rejoice with them that rejoice. I mean, coming to convocation and saying, brother, I'm glad about what God's doing in your life and in your family and in your health and in your money. And since you're on my roll, I believe if God did it for you, God's getting ready to do it for me. I mean, grabbing another by brother by the hand and say, we go going to praise God because he's getting ready to bring your son back in the church, your daughter back in relationship. We're getting ready to dance because God's getting ready to bring you out of debt. I got to pray for. Can't use your issue to project my political agenda. Can't use your issue to make me look, you look bad and me look good. But in this season, I got to be your EKG. In this season, I got to be your IV. And when you're weak, uh, I got to be strong for you. Uh, and I got to be anointed enough to know your business. Uh, hallelujah. But, but blessed enough not to tell nobody else. Uh, I got to be able to take it on my knees uh, and say, Lord, do it. Would you just grab uh, a brother by the hand uh, and say, Lord... Do it for my brother. So we find here in this season with the fiscal burden many are carrying and the daily anxiety many are enduring. I pose the same question our Redeemer posed. I was away from the crucifixion in Matthew. 26 and 40. Can you watch with me one hour? Can you come out of the concessions for one hour? Can you come out of your meeting for one hour? Can you come out of your strategy session for one hour? Can you come out of your hotel room for one hour. Can you come from among your friends and your peers for one hour? Because you don't know what I'm facing, but I'm not gonna be able to face it if you don't pray for me. I'm here in holy convocation and my heart is breaking and my spirit is crushed because I left a tomb back at home and if I don't have another brother who is selfless enough to grab me by my hand and say it won't always be like this. He that hath begun a good work in you is able to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hang on in there because I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Go help me here. No, no, get seed begging bread. I just want to know are you okay with an assignment of one? An assignment that doesn't put you on the video screen. An assignment that does not put you on a YouTube clip. An assignment that will not put you on Facebook Live, but an assignment that will change your entire life. Am I good enough? 
for your anointing. Am I good enough for your power? Because in this season, God says, I need you to be okay with the assignment of one. So here, as I had to transition through my introduction, the songwriter penned, pray for me. While times are are going well with you. Pray for me that the Lord will carry me through. Pray for me that the will of the Lord will be done. Pray, pray for me. As I transition this morning, I must note it is important that you don't underestimate the supernatural ability in you because there's power in your intercession. Matter of fact, you ought to look at the name. How many of y'all in here still got the Holy Ghost? Because we too starchy in here to have the Holy Ghost. Uh, used to hear my granddaddy say stuff like, I can feel him in my hands. Uh, I can feel him in my feet. And uh, I can feel him all over me. I used to hear the old church say, I looked at my hands. And Lord, help me here. They look new. I looked at my feet and they did too. Some of y'all are too laid back on this morning. But if you got the real Holy Ghost, uh, how dare you to shout in baritone and tenor, I got it. Truth is that if you really got it, your neighbor might be in trouble. Because I'm here to let you know that anything can happen. When you sit next to somebody that has the Holy Ghost, anything can happen on your row. As a, as a matter of fact, if you got the Holy Ghost, lift up your right hand. And then wave that right hand. And then take that right hand. Oh, help me here. Lay it on your neighbor and say, neighbor, I command everything in your life that tried to break you, crush you, destroy you, to lose you in the name of Jesus. Now, before I close my argument, Bishop Vaughn, I must answer the question, why do we need intercession? In order to understand why we need intercession, transparency must be permitted. Paul, who authored over two-thirds of the New Testament and was transformed after an encounter with God on Damascus Road is clearly in the text in that sits in Laban having a human moment. And I wish the men of the Church of God in Christ would be real. But there's some times where we all are guilty of having human moments. There are times where we try to act like Superman and try to act like superheroes, but nobody can see in private what we are literally going through because there are some men that came to convocation uh, who don't know what they're going back home to because uh, they used everything they had just to get here and some of us barely got here and that's why when we walked in these doors we were singing I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart uh, and I will enter his courts with praise uh, and I will say this is the day uh, that the Lord has made uh, I will rejoice uh, for he has made me glad and so here on uh, this morning uh, I'm here to tell you that in this human moment uh, in the initial part of this text Paul's focus is not on what's on him God help me here but rather what's after him and I'm here to submit this morning that Satan has succeeded in your life when you prefer only what's after you instead of what's on you can I just get two or three brothers to just high five another brother and say brother 
it's on me. You don't need to be about jealous brother this morning or an envious brother or a brother they can't rejoice with you but find you somebody that doesn't look stuck up and doesn't look like uh, they got a problem with what God is getting ready to do for you. Look them dead in the eye and tell them brother tell them it's on me. Now I'm here to tell you this morning uh, that if it's on you that, then allow me to be intentional and exclaim the obvious uh, that the only reason that it's after you uh, is because it's on you. Uh, there's some folk that's up in this house this morning that if we could be real today, uh, the devil's been after you all year long. Uh, can I be real this morning? Uh, some of you, he's been after you for two or three years now. Uh, and it feels uh, like you're getting ready to lose your mind. Uh, but can I give you some good news? Uh, the devil wouldn't be after you uh, if the anointing wasn't on you. Uh, and I came to tell uh, about 2,000 men in here uh, that have survived some real stuff in this season. Uh, I don't care how broken you may be. Uh, it's on you. I don't care how tough it's been. It's on you. I don't care how much you've had to cry. It's on you. Lean on a neighbor. Shake them and rock them. God, I don't have no help here. Rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them. Rock them and shake them. And say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor, tell them the reason uh, the devil is after you uh, and the devil is after me uh, is because after all we've been through, uh, it's still on us. Uh, had to cry myself to sleep, uh, but it's still on us. Uh, had to worry myself to death, uh, but it's still on us. Uh, had to lose some stuff uh, in this season, uh, but it's still on us. Uh, had moments of despair, uh, uh, but I heard uh, weeping may endure for a night. Uh, joy uh, comes in the morning uh, slap another brother high five uh, and tell him it's on us I don't know why I felt this, uh, but I believe that by the time we get home, uh, there's going to be transformation uh, in our houses, uh, on our, in our churches, uh, in our money, uh, in our pocketbook, uh, in our health, uh, in our mind. Uh, slap another neighbor and say it's on us. Let me say this. Y'all too cute for it to be on you. Because when you've been through hell and high water and you've been confronted with the idea of losing your existence, when the Lord steps in and picks you up and turns you around, you don't care who's sitting next to you. But if you got to scream all by yourself, you scream like Bartimaeus. They don't know why you're screaming, uh, but you beat cancer. Uh, they don't know why you're screaming, uh, but you beat hypertension. Uh, they don't know how you're screaming, uh, but you beat a sugar diabetes diagnosis. Uh, they don't know why you're screaming, but you should be divorced. Uh, they don't know why you're screaming, but you should have got a foreclosure notice. Uh, but the Lord uh, stepped in. Can I tell you what the songwriter said? Uh, late. He didn't say early. He didn't say on time. Uh, he said late. Would you lean on a neighbor and say, neighbor, get ready for late. When everybody thinks you're over, when everybody thinks you're finished, when everybody thinks you're in trouble, when everybody digs a ditch for you, when everybody's dug your grave, when the pallbearers show up for duty, late, Lazarus, late, Jesus, late, you, 
late. Let everybody else be blessed. Let everybody else get what they want. You just wait on the Lord. Nathaniel, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength late. They shall mount up on wings as an eagle late. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Lean on a brother and say, I'd rather be late than not get there at all. Late when the doctor says no. Late when the physician says it's over. Late when you get ready to lose your mind. Late in the midnight hour. God, go turn it around. Here's the dancing part. It's going to work, which means you don't have to work. All you got to do is scream. And while you're screaming, it's going to work in your favor. Look at another brother and say, brother, hold on, because it's working in your favor. Say it. Say it. Say it. I hear my granddaddy preach. I've seen the lightning flashing. And I've heard the thunders roar. I've felt sin breakers dashing. Trying to conquer my soul. But, 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 but. But, but, uh, late, I heard, is there anybody here that can hear, do you hear God's voice, I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on, he promised never to leave me, never to leave God help me, me alone. Somebody say, no, never alone when my heart is broken. No, never alone when the pain is so difficult that I withdraw myself from those that love me. No, when the depression gets so bad until suicide looks like my only option. When I feel like uh, I'm all by myself, uh, isolated, uh, stressed, uh, perplexed, uh, but I hear Paul say, uh, we are troubled on every side, uh, yet not in distress, uh, persecuted, uh, uh, but not forsaken, uh, cast down, uh, but not destroyed. Uh, Can I tell a brother in this room uh, that if you praise God, uh, right in your space, uh, God will send an angel uh, to your address, uh, open up your mouth uh, and say it. Just have five, two or three people tell them it's getting ready to happen. Say it again, 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 it's getting ready to happen. Tell them it's getting ready to happen now. You don't know what it took uh, for me to make this proclamation. Uh, but through many uh, dangerous toils uh, and snares, uh, I've already, uh, I've already come. Uh, it was grace that brought me uh, safe this far. And grace that'll lead me on. Uh, say it. Let me, let me close with this. What I keep hearing in my spirit is you don't know my story. 
in this text, Paul of Tarsus is at war with the Apostle Paul. Sometime we see our greatest enemy, Bishop, as the people around us. But what happens when what you were starts fighting what you shall be? What, what happens when you get to the point where you can see what God said, but you don't have the strength to lay hold of what he said? What happens when Paul of Tarsus is at war with the apostle Paul? Yes, I'm called. Of course, God's got his hand on my life, yes, but I've clearly had enough. No, everything is not okay. We come to church acting like we gotta put on for one another. It's all right to come to men's day and throw your hands up and say, I'm not okay. I feel like giving up. That's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. I feel like throwing in the towel. We feel as if we've got to be cliche-ish. And seeing I feel like going on when I don't feel like getting out of bed. If you live long enough, I don't care what your title is. Eventually, Paul of Tarsus will show up. I don't care what your ministry is. I don't care what you've been called to do. I don't care what your accolades may be. I don't care what people say about you. There will be moments in your life where you will look like the Apostle Paul, but feel like Paul of Tarsus. What do you do when Paul of Tarsus comes to the Holy Convocation? And because he has on a robe, wears an adjutant's court, got a certificate, paid his report, will go out to eat with you for dinner, you can't deserve that you're not standing next to the Apostle Paul, but you're standing beside Paul of Tarsus. And your assignment is not to talk about the latest gossip. Your assignment is not to find out the latest news. Your assignment is not to talk about how you're going to run out on your wife and how many women you had during the course of the week. But your assignment is to put your brother back in his rightful place. Oh God, help me here. What does it matter if I'm in my place? And you're not in your. Can you? Oh God. Can you deserve the Tarsus on your robe? He's anointed. He's gifted. But he's broken. People speak well of him. His name is in lights. He's got lineage and DNA in this church. Oh but who can he talk to he and say, I'm getting ready to lose my mind? Yeah. My my God. God. Amen. So Just because I have a good church doesn't mean I'm happy. Well, hey. Amen. Yeah. Just because I got money doesn't mean I'm happy. All right, Amen. All right. Just because titles and accolades are assigned doesn't mean I'm happy. There are some times you got to know when despite all of the things you get in this world that there's something going on in your inner you. And the truth is folks 
can't deliver you. But we used to come to the altar because the altar was for alterations. And we used to testify. I went to the meeting one night. And my heart wasn't right. Something got a hold of me. If I get ready to go back to Virginia, can I tell you all, I don't care if I never get another chance at the mic. I don't care if I never get another title or another opportunity for position. I just want to make sure that before I leave here, that something gets a hold of me and you ought to grab your neighbor by the hand and say neighbor what's on me yeah it's getting ready to get on you and are you coming out of this thing say it say it say it yeah, yes I got to leave you here now. But I want you to know that when you pray me, black into my rightful place. It is written in divine scripture in between verses 2 and 3 of chapter 3. If you would allow me to use my spiritual imagination, it was clear that somebody prayed in the text. The songwriter penned, somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. The preacher prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time to pray for me. I'm so glad they prayed. I'm so glad they prayed for me. My mother prayed. Anybody have a mother that prayed for you? She prayed for me. Had me on their mind. Took the time to pray for me. Lean on your neighbor and say, neighbor, before you leave this room today, will you please pray for me? He states, and I'm finished. He says, but the Lord is faithful. And I'm finished. The Lord is faithful. The key to this text is not just a statement he's faithful, but his expectation. This morning as I close, I want every man to stand to your feet. You're not the first man that's getting ready to get a resurrection. Lazarus died, stayed dead for four days. Jesus died, stayed dead for three. But early, early. on Sunday morning, yes, sir. he got up yes, sir. with all power in his hand. Yes. Grab that brother by the hand nearest to you. Your assignment today is simply to pray for them. Squeeze that hand. I don't need to know your business. Don't need to know your issue. Just won't pray for you. Got to pray for your family. Got to pray for your children. Got to pray for your mind. Got to pray for your stuff. That the devil don't get another thing before this year close. I got to cover you now. You are precious cargo. The devil desires to sift you as wheat. But I pray for you that your faith fail not. I bind every demon. I bind every devil. 
I bind every attack on your life, on your family, on your stuff, on your spirit. I loose the grace of God. I loose the anointing of God. I loose the power of God. I'm not going to let you go until everything in your life starts turning for the good. I decree over your life that no weapon that's formed against you shall be able to prosper. I speak over your life. You shall tread over serpents and scorpions and nothing by any means shall be able to prosper, shall be able to conquer you. Nay, in all these things, I speak to the conqueror in you. I speak to the man in you. I speak to the anointing in you. I call forth the apostolic anointing in you. I cover my brother. God, help me here. I cover my brother. Cover your mind. Cover your spirit. Cover your dreams. Cover your vision. Cover your objectives. In the name of I bind every threat. I bind every threat. I come against doubt. I come against fear. I come against insecurity. I come against anger. I come against bitterness. I come against the spirit of being resentful. I bind it right now and I loose my brother. I loose my brother. I loose my I loose my brother. I loose my brother. I loose my brother. Before you let that hand go, squeeze that hand as tight as you can and say, brother, come forth. Say it again, brother, come forth. Say it again, brother, come forth. Lift your hands. Open your mouth and scream like it's already done. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him until sickness comes off your body. Praise him until anxiety leaves your mind. Praise him until cynicism leaves your spirit. Let everything that have breath, you're made for this. You're built for this. You can handle this. No weapon formed against you shall be able. Don't stop. Get it. Get it. Get it. No music. I'm done. We will drive the devil into lunacy. If for the next 60 minutes, 60 seconds, the men of the church of God in Christ will praise him like we were in a prayer meeting. I don't care who you are or what you've been through. You got a responsibility to praise him right now. Lift up your hands, open your mouth for the next 60 seconds. Blow up everything on your row. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Drive the devil out of your pain, out of your issue, out of your struggle, out of your circumstance. Open up your Drive him, drive him, drive him, drive him, drive him, drive him. He's been trying to drive you, but you got to drive him. He's been trying to destroy you, but you got to annihilate him. He's been trying to humiliate you, frustrate your purpose, but you got to put him out of business. It's in your praise. It's all on you, brothers, now. It's in your praise the last two months of this year is in your praise. Your family's future is in your praise. Your children, your sons, your church, your, it's on you now. It's about you and God. It's in your worship. 
come too far to turn around now. I got to praise my way through this. With my hands lifted up. Ay, ay, ay. Hallelujah. 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 Fill me again, Lord. Fill me again, Lord. Save me again, Lord. Anoint me afresh. Let your anointing fall on me. Do it now. Take this heaviness off me. Help me not to be weary in well doing. Help me to hang on in there. Help me to speak over my children. Help me to pray for my family. Help me to be the priest you called me to be. In Jesus' name, sooner or later, it's turning in my favor. It's turning around for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You haven't done this all week long. Hallelujah. The old church would say, say, Jesus, 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 Jesus. My soul loves you. My soul seek to please you. My soul honor you. My soul bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Forgive you the glory. Forgive you the honor. We bless your name. In Jesus' name. We bless your 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 name. We bless, your name. We bless. every brother lifted up. Your name is great. Let me hear you, let me hear you, brothers. Your name is... Be healed, be healed, be healed. Your name... Square. Your name is great. Your name is great. Your name... This time no music, just say yes, Lord. Every man up in here, I know some got to go, but yes! Let hell hear you say, yes! Let it come out of your belly, say, yes! Oh, hallelujah! Yes! One more time, yes, Lord! Yes! Sit down, find another brother, wrap your arms around him, and tell him it's going to be all right. Oh, oh, oh. Tell him it's going to be all right. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be all right. It's, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Hallelujah. Say it with everything in you. It's going to be all right.